Hey, what's up guys? It's X Morgan with My Spiritual Life coming to you live, actually not live, very sleep deprived and very not pregnant anymore. Thank God. We, in the middle of having the baby, we also decided that things weren't exciting enough, so we moved, not far from where we lived, but just to a bigger house. So I don't have my things set up yet. I don't even have my recording stuff officially set up yet, but we're just gonna make this work with what we got today. So I really wanted to post a video to share with you guys like how this journey has been with having the new baby and my thoughts and how that involves with my transition out of Mormonism and some thoughts about what I'm going to do with the channel moving forward. So if you're interested in any of those things and other ramblings that might come to my mind, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's get down to business. Um, I wanted to thank you guys. So many of you have been there for me for the past couple years. And uh, I know that, I don't know, we've become friends through all of this. You guys feel like my extra little family. And I want to say thank you for your support. And that these last couple months have been amazing and horrifying and awesome. <laughs> Trying to move and have a baby is not something that I think most doctors would recommend. However, we did survive. <laughs> um, so the birth of our son went really well. His name is August and he's perfect and we love him and he is doing great. Both of us are doing great. I'm recovering really well and we're tired, of course, but luckily he's not really colicky or anything. So he's just a normal difficult newborn as opposed to like an extra difficult one. So that's nice. Uh, Lucas is doing really good. Lucas is our oldest son. Um, he's about to turn three, which is crazy. And he's doing really good. Mostly just ignores the baby, except when we beg him to give the baby a hug or a kiss. But that works pretty well because we don't want him trying to help and <laughs> with the baby too much and accidentally causing trouble. Uh, Jared is doing great. He loves nothing more than being a dad. So he's just a big old sensitive goober. And uh, yeah, he's just loving new baby cuddle time. I wanted to share some like kind of emotional takeaways I've had recently because I, I feel like having August has made me a better person. I know he's only been around for a little while, but I feel like he's made me a better person already because he has reminded me what's really important. And I feel like having him has helped me put things in perspective in just a, on a deeper level, like to remind myself like what really matters and maybe a lot of the things that I stress about or worry about don't really matter. <laughs> At least don't matter as much as I would like to think that they do. Anyway, he's made me a better person and he's challenging me in all the right ways and and he smiles at me and it melts my heart and I love him. Um, it, it's crazy. It, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy like that we have kids. That's so weird. We Instead of just one, all of a sudden it's kids. That's just insane. I don't know how this happened. Well, I do and I can't talk about it because we're on YouTube, but still crazy. One thing that has been a struggle as far as having two kids now it has been like getting my mom guilt triggered a lot more, like feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm failing at everything I do, like kind of that like feeling. And it this this has been really helpful for me though because it's been making me more aware of my own definition of what it means to be a good mom and trying to reevaluate it and get it to be somewhat more rational and reasonable. I think we grew up kind of with these expectations on us that like there's this threshold of like, here's the criteria it takes to be like a good person. And I think similarly, we have that criteria for what it takes to be a good mom or a good friend or a good sibling or wife or whatever. And I think that oftentimes that criteria um, that we have is just like unrealistic. And then we're constantly comparing ourselves to this unrealistic expectation and then just feeling like we're failing all the time because our expectations are just not able to be met. 
And so I've been trying to work through in these past um, couple months, just work through that with myself that when I find myself feeling really ashamed or feeling a lot of guilt or feeling overwhelmed, that like I need to reevaluate what my expectations are and figure out like, okay, I'm probably feeling bad because I think I should be able to do all these things that I can't do anymore now that we have two kids instead of one and that that's okay and that's normal and that doesn't make me a bad mom. It just means that things are changing. (laughs) It's easier said than done, but it really does help. Like, because it's so easy to sit here and when something goes wrong, be like, I should have done better. I should have known better. I should have tried harder. And it's always just like so toxic to say that stuff to yourself, but you can't like not say it especially if you feel like your kids are suffering because you're not a mind reader. (laughs) But that's seriously how it feels. I feel like I should be able to read their minds so that they don't get diaper rashes or they don't get, you know, all these things. And and I'll tell you what, like with newborns, like it's like almost impossible to avoid diaper rash because the minute you change their diaper, they just s*** again. Anyway, um, so I've just been working through trying to figure out and kind of deconstruct like what it means to be a good mom and how do I really want that definition to look? Because I think if I'm trying really hard to take care of them, that deserves some credit instead of being so hard on myself, which I generally am. (laughs) The other thing I'm trying to manage my expectations around is like just realizing that I just can't do a lot of the things that I used to be able to do because I get my most frustrated when I'm trying to watch both kids and also simultaneously like get things done. And that just can't happen because I have two barfing machines. But I'm just reminding myself that It's okay if things don't get done, which is hard because my brain is very perfectionist. So like the other day I was like, I just want to unpack the closet today. I just, that's all I want to do. And of course I'm like trying to do that, but the kids need me and all this. And, and so finally I walk into the closet and I have like a second to, to unpack some things and I stand there and I just look at all the boxes and I'm just like, oh my God, (laughs) this like, it's just too much. And then I thought to myself like, What's going to happen if I don't unpack these boxes today? And I thought about it and I was like, nothing. Nothing is going to happen. It's not going to be the end of the world. We're not going to starve. We're not going to be naked. If we, if we were going to be naked, we probably could just like open a box and pull something out. But uh, just like trying to bring myself into the moment and realize like, okay, this is okay. Everything is fine. (laughs) And, and you know what? Boxes will be packed one day. Maybe by the time we pay off our 30 year mortgage, the boxes will be unpacked. But you know, if not, nothing bad will probably happen. (laughs) Hopefully. I wanted to share some of these stories with you guys because I really do feel like so much of my perfectionism and my issues came from my childhood and the way I was taught to view the world and the way I was taught to view myself. And I am trying to break out of that. And I think that it is a very common experience to be struggling with this. And so I just want you guys all to know you're not the only ones. Unless you guys aren't struggling with it, then this is going to be super awkward, embarrassing. Oh, well. Anyway, moving forward with this channel. This community means so much to me and I really don't want this channel to stop here. Um, But I also want to facilitate a positive influence moving forward because I know that Mormonism will always be a part of my story, but I also know that I don't want to talk about it exclusively forever because I want to move on. And so I hope that I can find ways to incorporate helpful information for you guys, helpful content and uplifting content, and hopefully maybe even doing more interviews or sharing more of other people's stories um, and talking about like, how do we move forward? Like, how do we let go of the labels and just like learn how to be a human being (laughs) in this world, how to, how, how to move on? 
So I have lots of ideas about the channel moving forward and lots of spit up to clean up and somehow it's all gonna work out. So if you've been along with me for this long, for this ride that we're going on, I hope that you continue to take this journey with me. And I would encourage you to click the link below to join my Facebook group where we can be buddies and I post live videos in there. And also to join my newsletter where I update you guys also about like workshops and retreats and things I have going on. Cause I'm always doing something. Thank you to everyone who's supported us this far in this journey and I'm excited to see what happens next. And a huge thanks to our amazing Patreon supporters who supported us even while we were not posting videos and we were busy feeding our child. Both of them. I didn't just start feeding the new one, I was feeding them both. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Hey, what's up guys? It's, <laughs> it's been a hot minute since I've done this intro. <laughs> oh. Hey, what's up guys? It's X Morgan. This is, why does this feel so unnatural? What does it mean to be very not pregnant? <laughs> so not pregnant, even more than most people. Whoops. <laughs>